In this video, we'll try to ingest a text file and we'll try to perform a search on the text file. So the rest of the things are going to be same. So I will quickly go over the application dot properties and you can see I'm passing my open AI key and then I'm passing my model. And then in the resources, I have created one data folder and under this data folder, I do have this story dot txt. In this particular file, we have around 343 lines and this is a story about an author. So we'll try to perform some vector search on this file and we'll try to get a response out of it. So for that, so first of all, I have created this config folder and under this config folder, I have created this vector store config as we have covered in our high level diagram, right? If you want to ingest any kind of document into a vector store, then we need to have an embedding model, which is going to convert those documents into an embedding format. So here we are going to leverage the embedding model provided by Spring AI. In this case, you can see I have created a configuration class and then I have defined a bean. So we do have to define our vector store and here we are using a simple vector store. This is also being provided by Spring AI framework only. This is an inbuilt vector store and this is good for demo and POC purposes. If you do have to deal with a lot of data, then the next step would be to utilize the vector database instead of using this simple vector store. So in this case, we have to initialize our vector store and we are going to initialize it like this. So under this vector store, I'm passing this embedding model. This embedding model is coming from a Spring AI embedding. And then we have to initialize this simple vector store. And this would be initialized just by passing this embedding model. As per this diagram, our vector store has been defined now. Next step would be we have to take the data and then have to convert into a document and then only we can add it into a vector store. So we have created this service folder over here. So I will go to this AI service. First of all, we have to ingest our text file, which I mentioned over here, story.txt. And for that, I'm just using this resource property. So here we just have to define class path with the value annotation. The class path is going to take a part till resources. And after that, we can just provide our data and story.txt to take all this data. We are relying on this resource interface. Then we have defined our method over here. So let's go with this method here. You can see I am using text reader. So this text reader is specifically coming from the spring AI reader framework only. It is capable of taking the this resource so we can just pass a text resource over here and uh, this particular text reader can convert it into a document object that we can just retrieve it using text reader dot get method and then it will return you the document object now if you want to see how this document object is going to look like so we can just directly print it and the next step is going to be chunking of text so this chunking of text we are going to rely on this token text splitter and again this token text splitter is is also going to come from a Spring AI framework only. But here you can see it's coming from transform it. And then we do have the splitter package. And from there, the token text splitter is coming. So this would help you to chunk out your document object. So it's instead of having only one document object, it will try to chunk it out into different document objects. And that is going to be possible because if you go to this token text splitter, then you can see the default chunk size. So it is going to take like 800 token. And if it is going beyond 800 token, then it will just chunk it out into a different document object. So that's how we can do the chunking of document object. So after that, we have to add all this document object into vector store. And for that, we are going to rely on vector store dot add method. This vector store we have already auto add over here and this is coming from this configuration class because here only we have defined our vector store. So the last step is adding our document object into a vector store. We are going to apply this text splitter on our document object and then we are going to add it into our vector store. So once we have added our vector store, after that we have to just perform a vector search and for that we have to pass our query. So that's why we are passing a variable as a query into this particular method. So we are passing our query and then we are utilizing Using this similarity search method under this vector store. So similarity search would help us to retrieve the document object which are going to be more similar to the asked query. So here you can see we are going to store it in the list of document object and then we are just returning a result because we are returning as a list of documents. So return type is going to be this. So now let me go to controller and here you can see like we have defined our endpoint. So here we have defined our endpoint as a post one. We are auto wiring our AI service. We are going to pass a query and then we will try to retrieve the document object which are similar to the asked query here first of all we are calling our method and then we are navigating it till get content method to retrieve the result in the text format so we will try to run this code now 
So our code is up and running. I have opened my postpan and will try to hit that endpoint. So here we can see our endpoint is AI v1 query. So I will just try to, to convert this. And then we are going to ask our question, what did author do while growing up? Okay, and we'll try to hit this endpoint. And one thing you'd notice over here, as, as soon as you hit the endpoint, you can probably just see some interesting output over here. So first thing you can notice, like here it's saying splitting up document into 21 chunks. And it is happening because we are applying this token text splitter. If we would have passed all this text into one shot, then our program would have failed because the data was a bit large to pass it in a single shot. And that's why actually we have applied this token text splitter. And this token text splitter has chunked all this data into 21 chunks. It means the 21 document object has been created. Now, for all those 21 document object, the embedding model came into picture and it has converted all this you know 21 document into embeddings and for each and every document we are going to have a document id so anytime like when we are going to hit the endpoint so the first thing is going to be this only like it will take the document will try to chunk it out into different document object will try to run embedding model on all those document objects so that all this data can be converted into embeddings so that like our similarity search has been performed on top of it so now let me go back to postman and here here you can see like we are getting a lot of out because we are returning the list of documents so here it has just given like possible answers which were closer to the asked query so when it performed the similarity search it has identified all these possible values over there as an answer for the asked query and because we are returning a list of documents so it has just returned like that what we can do to refine it so as of now actually we are just returning the list of documents based on our similarity search criteria so it has given like all possible results to refine this we can do few more things but before that i just wanted to show you like if we haven't printed this where we have navigated till get content dot string method then what would have happened and let me just try to print like this and in this case it's going to return the document only so i'm going to return the list of document over here again i will try to go ahead and try to hit the endpoint and again the similar thing is going to happen where the document is going to be converted into different document objects then the embedding model is going to run and then we are going to get the out it's probably going to take some time before we can see the result and here you can see now if we are just printing the document object then it is going to look like this all of our text data is going to be converted uh, into the vector embedding and that vector embedding is going to be list of doubles and this is how that data is going to look like so this is just for your understanding like what exactly is happening under the hood and why we have to navigate till this method to get the output in the string format so the second thing what we can do so in the similarity search here actually we were just calling our similarity search but under similarity search also we can pass multiple parameters so let me go back to a spring documentation and here you can see the similarity search method in the interface allow for retrieving documents similar to given query string. These methods can be fine tuned by using the following parameters. One parameter is k parameter and this is for k nearest neighbor. There are different algorithms to perform a similarity search. One is going to be k nearest neighbor. So here we can just let us know okay an integer that is specified the maximum number of similar documents to return. So instead of getting all the document we can just refine it. I need like two documents three documents something like that which is more similar to the output what i am getting then we can have the threshold a double value ranging from 0 to 1 where values closer to 1 indicate higher similarity and by default if, if you set a threshold of 0 0.75 so for instance only documents with the similarity above this value are returned that's how we can narrow down our search so we can have a higher threshold criteria and then there are certain filter expression that also we can apply we are going to refine a bit using all these parameters so for that the rest of the things are going to be same. We still have to pass our text resources, have to chunk it out into document object and then so have to convert it into document object and then have to chunk it out into different documents. And then we are going to have our similarity search refined over here. So to refine it under similarity search, we have to call this search request dot defaults method. And as soon as you call it, then there are going to be several options. Here you can see like with similarity threshold, with query, with top K, with filter expression, all those parameters 
parameters are over here to fine tune our search criteria so as of now in this option what i'm going like okay i can just go for with top k where i'm looking for you know top first document and also what i can do i can define threshold by default is going to be 0 0.75 so i can just mark it 0 0.8 and here we are calling this particular method now into this v2 query so again same thing only the method name is different but the rest of the things are going to be same so i will just try to run this again so our code is up and running i will go ahead and try to hit this endpoint in this case, we are also getting the similar result even after applying those certain filters. So at least like in this case, it is not making a lot of difference in the output, but it also differs case by case. So this is how actually we can just pass additional parameters in our similarity search criteria. As of now, we have covered scenarios where actually we were passing our query and we have seen in action how the similarity search is going to be performed and how the data is going to be returned. But from the application perspective, once those document object has been returned out of it, then we have to perform a chat. So to perform a chat, we have to invoke our chat model API over here. So that's why we are auto wiring our chat model. And under chat model, we are utilizing our call method. And under this, we have to pass a prompt. So we are just invoking this new prompt and under this we are passing this query as it is and then we are navigating till get content method as we have seen earlier so let me try to run this code now now this particular query is going to be passed as a prompt and we are expected to get some response out of it instead of getting all this list of documents which, which were coming based on the similarity search now we are performing a chat so the output should be a bit refined so you can see in this case saying since you didn't specify a particular author i will provide a general overview of what many authors tend to do while growing up so it is providing a very general response it's not able to understand like i'm asking for author information from the given text file and not in general so in our next video we'll try to refine this output so that like when we are going to ask for author information it is going to provide us information from the given text file only and not in general that's all for this video Thank you for watching.